live from Boston, Massachusetts. It's The Cube at the HP Vertica Big Data Conference 2014. Brought to you by HP. With your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back. We're here live in Boston for HP's Big Data Conference. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, with Jeff Kelly, my co-host, and our next guest is Lawrence Schwartz, VP of Marketing at Tunity. Welcome back to theCUBE, CUBE alumni. Great to see you again. Great to be back. Uh, we love having you on, uh, one, because you're a friend of theCUBE, but also you really have a good pulse of what's going on in the market editorially, and I want to get your take on a few things. One, give us the, the take of the, of the show here at Vertica, the, the Big Data Show. What's the vibe? What's sure. your take? Sure, yeah, no, it's been, a, it's been a great show this year. I know it's been the second year for them. Um, we've really seen uh, a lot more interest in uh, a lot of real uh, use cases. Uh, you know, last year a lot of people were kind of figuring out how they wanted to use Vertica, what they were going to do with it. Uh, and this time we've seen, you know, they have real, you know, kind of complex solutions they want to implement. We've heard people who are customers who are, are coming here and looking at using, um, you know, Vertica as a target, using it as a source. How do they do uh, disaster recovery? How do they manage it over wide area networks and do things like uh, the Internet of Things over wide areas? We hear others thinking about, you know, tiered storage now between Vertica and Hadoop and other systems mm -hmm. that they have. Um, so it's been a great show. It's been some really meaty discussions that we've had with uh, people who have come by. Yeah, so we, you know, we've done some research at Wikibon around big data use cases and kind of adoption models and, and really where, what people are really doing with it. And you mentioned last year, you saw a lot of people kind of, uh, you know, either, either kind of kicking the tires with Vertica and some of the other solutions out there, trying to, trying to grasp kind of where they are and, and what they can do with the technology. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, through our surveys, we're definitely starting to see that shift from some of that, you know, kicking the tires to people actually experimenting and some right. even moving to more production workloads. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, Data integration is a key part of, of the big data ecosystem. So, you know, Hadoop sure. gets a lot of coverage, uh, some of the NoSQL data stores, the analytic databases like Vertica. Right. But talk a little bit about your value proposition and the larger ecosystem. I mean, one of the themes yeah. of this show for sure is that, you know, Vertica wants to, wants to display all their partners and kind of the ecosystem play. And that's, sure. there, there's a reason for that because it's important in order to tie this all together and make it real. So where, where does Attuny really fit um, in this ecosystem? Sure, and I think, uh, you know, I know you guys had uh, Colin on here yesterday uh, talking about uh, the value that yep, people are Cole getting Mahoney, out of Vertica. GM of uh, Vertica. Exactly, and uh, I think uh, the analogy that he brought up was the, a Ferrari, right, or that came up there, and he said, well, it's even more than that. It's, you know, Ferrari freight truck or, or something even larger. It's a new type of vehicle that people can do a lot with they're not used to. So when you think about data integration, um, if you want to kind of bring that analogy one step further, is you've got to get the data into the truck, right? You've got to get what you want in there. Um, and that's part one, that's where data integration comes into play. Um, and then once the truck is moving, you know, how do you change the data that's in there? You know, how do you keep it up to date while it's moving at 100 or 150 miles an hour, however fast you can drive it? So data integration plays a key part of um, how do you get started? How do you make sure everything's loaded up so you can then go and run off mm -hmm. and start doing these amazing analytics? Um, and then once you get the ball rolling, um, you know, how do you, you know, keep it up to date and make sure everything's moving? And that's, that's where we come in and play and uh, really make sure that process is easy to do, uh, simplify when you've got a lot of sources that you're pulling it in from, mm -hmm. um, and making that you know, not the focus, right? You want to get your focus out of the analytics, right? You don't want to spend all your time setting it up, so you take care of that. Right, you know, we hear that a lot from practitioners, is that 80% you know, of our time is spent kind of getting data to the right place, or yeah. massaging it to get it into a form that we can actually do some analysis on it. Sure. So to the extent that you can provide either tooling or, or other services that help make that easier, yeah. Obviously, that's going to be a big, big value proposition. Um, but another, you know, kind of a, one of the key tenets of big data is, you know, big data is heavy. Yes. You don't want to move it unless you have to. You want to bring the compute to the data that, rather than the data to the compute. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, wh what I'm interested in hearing is from from a player like Attunity. Yeah. How does that impact a data integration player such as yourselves? Mm -hmm. um, you know, in the old world, it was a lot about e it, was, it was ETL. Yes, uh, yeah. you know, batch loading from here to there, yeah. and it was pretty you know, kind of boring stuff. Everyone kind of got it. <laughs> sure. But in this new world, you know, there's so much more, so many more data sources. There's you know these right. key concepts like kind of leave the data where it is when you can. Right. Sure. So it would seem to me that it would it's particularly disruptive to the data integration space. So how are you you know what sure. how do you fit into that and and how are you trying to take advantage of some of these changes that we're seeing that are associated with big data? Sure, sure. Well, it's definitely you know changed the model a little bit, but there's still a lot of concerns that people generally have. Um, even if they want to, you know, address it in place or do something like that with with Hadoop, you still have to you still have a lot of legacy sources or other areas mm -hmm. that you need to pull it in from. That's one thing. 
Uh, and then the other thing is that whole ETL model you mentioned, which is the extract, the transform, and the load. Uh, that's been changing a lot over the last couple of years because uh, part of it is, you know, you would do that and you might have an intermediate server where you do tra heavy transformations and whatnot and then move it over. And now that you actually have so much compute power on these nodes and where it resists, and, and where it exists rather, you can actually focus more on the getting it moved over there and then doing the work mm -hmm. on it. So um, when you talk about uh, doing ELT or, you know, extract and load as quickly as possible and then do the transforms with the compute power you have, that actually is right in our wheelhouse. We don't try to be the end-all, be-all ETL player. People really want to do a lot of heavy transformations. There are certainly ways to do that, but we focus on the performance, keeping it up to date, keeping it real time. Mm -hmm. So it does. Uh, it's actually complementary to what we're thinking of. So that's interesting. So you're you're saying really our your key value proposition is that you know the transformation use the power of these new systems, whether it's Hadoop or something like Vertigo, whatever it is. Exactly, yeah. And your, one of your real key value propositions then is we're going to help you extract and load that data as quickly as possible. Absolutely. And then use the power of the system rather than the old model of extract the data, bring it into some uh, some other system where you're going to transform it, and then exactly. load it into the system. Is that really kind of where, that, where you that, guys fit? That, that's right, yeah. And, and there's still a lot of challenges with just that EL part, right? It's again, well, sure, it's not, it's not trivial at yeah, all, yeah. especially when you're dealing with the complexities of data sources yeah. uh, that are out there today. Um, so I want to talk about something else. So you, you're a marketing professional yourself. We talked sure. a little bit about, uh, before we went on, about how you come to these shows, and you learn about the technology, and you see potential customers, but you're also, yeah. as a marketer, trying to learn how people are using data um, you know, to, to do their jobs better. Mm -hmm. How are you as a marketer, not, not necessarily a big yeah. data marketer, just right. as a marketer, how, how are you adapting to this world? How has things changed over the years? Yeah, well, it's, it's fascinating in that, um, you know, for this show, you know, it's uh, running marketing fraternity, I always think about how to talk to the people in the space, and that's a, a key value for the show. But I've actually gone here and gone to some of the sessions that have been valuable for the marketing professional. Um, and I heard um, you know, Pramod Singh of HP, he gave one of the sessions yesterday, he was talking about all the uh, you know, uh, data that you get out of you know, social marketing and, or rather all the social activity that you see mm -hmm. going on. So he gave some amazing stats, you know, the latest from last year where you had, uh, I think, the rate of about 100,000 uh, tweets per minute and 700,000 uh, status updates per minute. So as a marketing professional, if I'm trying to see, okay, so what are people thinking about data integration or attunity mm -hmm in that vast ocean of data, all of a sudden, you know, the big data problem has come home to roost for the marketing <laughs> professional. Um, of course, HP has fantastic solutions with Vertica and Haven and other things that he talked about in his session, uh, but those are things that we all have to think yeah. about now. How do you find the sentiment out of that? How do you rate it? How do you quantify it? Um, and uh, it's exciting because it's new ways to think about it and, and get a view of it because people's buying behavior are, are very influenced by their friends and their peers rather than the mm -hmm. traditional uh, menus of marketing. But at the same time, it requires new tools, new ways of thinking, and you see you know, much more of an interaction I have to do with our CTO and understand yeah. how the data is pulled out and do that, that value. Right, so. well a marketer has to be much more technical these days and understand data much more than in the past. And John, I know this yeah. is you know, right in your wheelhouse with what you're doing with CrowdChat and trying to, trying to, 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 to both engage with the social web, but also measure it and try to understand yeah, I mean, how to interact with it in a valuable way. I'm hardcore on this, you know me. I, all I do is pimping CrowdChat, but for a reason is because CrowdChat to me is an, is an example of an engagement container that measures everything. It takes the active data and captures like a DVR for video, and rather than sending it to the pile, the junk pile of Twitter data that has to be pulled back, it's a data cleaning exercise that takes a lot of time, so I believe you're going to see real-time information in social channels sure. be driven by big data techniques, predictive analytics, prescriptive analytics. Big data will be a driver for providing personalization and value proposition to the right user. So, you know, Tom Davenport was on for author, and I didn't get to this, but this is the whole attention economy yeah. on steroids in <laughs> circa 2014, which is putting the right thing in front of the user at the right time, at the right place, when they need it. Sure. Not retargeting the Hilton ad when I don't want the Hilton, I just was checking if they had any availability, now I see the ad. So retargeting is a great example of failed social. Yes. It works short term, mm -hmm. but it doesn't work long term. I'm, I'm not as a buyer now, the brand is harnessed, so I was hurt by that because I'm pissed off. But I believe <laughs> social sales, mm -hmm. social business yeah. will be like the web was with e-business. And it's no brainer to me, and I think you're right on the money. Yeah. Data is the key. 
Yeah, and it was, and I, and I saw that in the crowd chat yesterday when I was looking at that, and it was an interesting example because you know that just last week, uh, you know, brought the whole family to the whole Orlando thing with the kids, and now I'm still getting advertisements for it. I'm just not interested, right? It was great two yeah. weeks ago, but now your browsing consumption has changed, and yeah. there's a term that I've been kicking around, I haven't talked about it publicly yet, called trusted consumption. Mm -hmm. Trusted consumption is social graph consumption, meaning I'm going to consume content from trusted sources, my friends, not Google search. Yeah. In this case, the search to Orlando yeah. was just a flyby. Your mm -hmm. intent was browsing, but now you're being shoved in ads. So I think this trusted consumption is going to be data-driven 100%. So, you know, Jeff, you know, I can rant on that all day, but <laughs> social business is real. Mm -hmm. It's going to have infrastructure and software. Yeah. You guys are doing a great job, so big, big fan. Okay, so Lawrence, thanks for coming on again. I know you had a short, a tight schedule. We had a short window here. This is theCUBE live in Boston talking about big data, the impact of society, marketing, and of course, serving customers. This is what it's all about, future big data. This is theCUBE. Of course, we're broadcasting the data. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Kelly. We'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs>